Three days after Brandon Crisp left his Barrie, Ontario home in a fury over losing his Xbox privileges, his bicycle was found abandoned a few kilometers from his home. Brandon's friends joined the search as they tried to make sense of what had happened. He's not the kind of kid that I thought would run away, like the complete opposite. But the search revealed nothing. For his family, the silence was deafening. At home in the empty bedroom where Brandon had once spent so much time gaming, his mother could only cling to a desperate hope. Is it hard for you to come in here? Or do you? I actually lie in his bed sometimes at night. Why? Just to see if I can sense him. My hope is that I'll walk in one day and he'll be there. It hasn't happened yet. It wrenched my heart. It really did. I meet with so many parents who are in anguish over the um, problems of their sons or daughters. For family therapist Gary Darenfeld, there was so much about the Crisp story that was familiar. Gaming addiction has become a growing part of his rural Ontario practice. Well, and what do the parents say to you that bring their children? The parents are at their wits end. They're pulling out their hair. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to limit their son. And they, they get held hostage by the backlash from their teenager when the teenager says, you can't do that to me, they're scared. I would get in pretty intense arguments with my mother. Daniel Fulmer was only eight when a friend introduced him to first-person shooter games, and the tension in his family started building. I felt physically compelled to play, and every time I couldn't play, I was angry. I was upset. Fulmer's addiction, and he does call it that, soon affected everything. Family, school, friends. Studies show that one in 12 young gamers now meet the psychological criteria for addiction. For Fulmer, it's taken years to return to a point where he can play for fun. When I first would log on to the game, I would, I would feel, literally feel chills. And this is a phenomenon that many of my friends describe, get what they call the shakes. So this is you with the gun. When yeah. I see the gun barrel, that's you. Yeah, and this is a sniper rifle. Okay, yeah, okay look, you're, you're hitting those guys and blood's spurting out and their heads are flying off. I mean, do you have the sense that you're actually killing somebody here? I feel anger when I hit one and they don't die. When they don't die? Yeah, so... And when you hit one and they do? Feels good. What's even weirder about it is that there's, a ch there's achievement experience involved. You kill 50 people, you get to level 2. You kill 100 people, you get to level 3. You kill 200 people, you get to level 4. And as you level, you're accomplishing things and getting rewards. And your brain is telling you, okay, I got a reward, I love this. The feeling you get as you just waste a whole group and you can just totally destroy them, that's fun. For the Berry boys, Nick and Brandon, the rewards of Call of Duty soon surpassed everything. They started playing on the extreme setting of the game, one Xbox calls not for the faint of heart. The game mode that we played was hardcore search and destroy, and you only get one life in there, so, and it's hardcore, so it's like one bullet and you're dead. So it's very extreme. Very extreme and very popular. Call of Duty is one of the fastest selling games in the world. The kids from small town Canada soon found friends and competitors around the globe. I've played with people from England and uh, all over Europe and even people out in Korea and Taiwan. It's pretty amazing. Even more amazing is the way some of them play. In this parentless universe where players talk to each other over the internet, you can be whoever you want to be and act in ways you'd never get away with at home. For the little kids, they scream and yell and call you names and trash talk. It's quite ridiculous. The high-pitched voices screaming through your ears and like along with grenades bouncing beside you. It's it's very very defeating 
to not only lose to someone, but hear them tell you, you're awful, you're terrible, and I just beat you at this game so bad, you should be embarrassed. This is like somebody calling you on the telephone and saying, hey, I hate you, you're horrible. Strong language is one reason why games like Call of Duty are rated M for mature. The other, needless to say, is the violence. In most provinces in Canada, it's illegal to sell these games to anyone under 17. When you're playing a game that's rated M, you can count on that game containing a lot of violence, a lot of blood, a lot of gore. David Walsh is a child psychologist who recognized early the impact of violent games on children and pushed the industry to adopt the rating system. When the industry itself says that kids under 17 shouldn't be playing this game, then, then a parent can be pretty sure that, that you know, it's not appropriate for a 10, 11, 12, 13-year-old kid to be playing. And yet we know that certainly 13, 14, 15-year-olds are playing those games. Yes, they are, yeah. And I think part of it is that, um, you know, we haven't taken it as seriously as I think we should. Case in point, look at the game 16-year-old Nick is playing. His weapon is a chainsaw. He bought the game himself. And survey after survey show that Nick is far from being alone. I like the glow of locust blood in this life. Kids playing bloody, gory games does concern the industry. That's why they brought in their rating system to begin with. But that doesn't mean they're eager to talk about it. Well, I think the industry is really doing everything that we can to try to prevent that. Danielle Le Boissier Par speaks for the game and console manufacturers in Canada and points out that often it's parents who buy the M-rated games. So if all these kids are playing these games uh, regardless, it's because the parents are letting them, you think? I mean, is that, is that what I, you conclude? I think, I think largely that is, that is the case. I think the real solution is educating people and, you know, getting them to make critical decisions about media. But you could, for instance. I mean, I go into the video store and I see these games there. I don't see any big banner on the front saying, this is inappropriate for children under the age of 17. Well, on the front of every game box, there is a rating, and it says M, and it's quite clear. But it's not a warning that says, warning parents, this is rated M, and it's because there's gratuitous violence, there's, you know, all these kinds of things you may not want your children exposed to. We feel that it is effective, it, the way that we're conveying the ratings information is effective, but ultimately, you know, we can't control what goes into every home. The other thing they can't control is where kids go to play the games. In recent years, one of the fastest growing sites on the internet is something called GameBattles.com. It's owned by MLG, Major League Gaming, which has created an online forum for competition. There, players can set up matches, work their way up ladders, even win prizes. Do you want to be at the top of your game? Compete and be the ballpark top dog on GameBattles.com. Game Battles boasts 2.5 million registered users, so winning here is confirmation. You're good. If you've got the skills, you could be on top of the leaderboard in Halo 3, Call of Duty 4. Like, we all started playing the kind of like the organized gaming, which you can meet people through Xbox Live that are good, and then you kind of say, hey, do you want to make a Game Battles clan with me? Six months before he ran away, Brandon's clan signed up for the game battle's Call of Duty ladder and was soon caught up in the competition. We had one that was called the Fundamental System. That was one of our uh, clans that I can really remember. That was uh, Brandon's name that he thought of. I had friends that played um, in tournaments. You know, they'd do 10, 12-hour days. Sometimes they would do, like, 24-hour marathons. But it's not just the time, says Daniel Fulmer. It's the pressure. If I wasn't playing enough, my team would get upset. My guild group, whatever, would get upset. Um, and then I would say to my mom, I have to play. I have